So I would say let's move on to the next thing here. Um, and generally what we want to cover next are classes because this, this goes hand in hand. So let me go all the way back up to the top again. And under methods, we're going to define a new method call called classes. So now things are going to get a little bit more advanced, guys. So just bear with me. Uh, maybe rewind this video over and over again until you understand it. But I'll, I'll try my best to make things as clear as possible. So now what is a class? I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, but a class is essentially a blueprint or a template for an object. It basically defines state and behavior, the state being represented by uh, fields and properties and behavior being represented by functions or methods. And we use classes to separate concerns as well as to define the architecture of an application, making it easy to work with various objects. That's the reason why C sharp, C -sharp is an object-oriented language. So let me demonstrate right now how to work with classes. I'm going to define a, another private method, private static, void classes. All right. So this is the method that we're calling above. And um, to work with classes, what we'll need to do, let's create a brand new class. So I'm um, not sure if you're working with Windows, but on a Mac, you just need to figure out how to do this on Windows. On a Mac, to create a new class, you would click on File and New File above here. So the, you should see File at the very top, New File. And you'll see this method uh, or this uh, window pop up. We're going to choose Empty Class here. And at the bottom, we're going to give the class a name. So instead of empty class, we'll change that to person because we're going to define a person object or a person class. And if I click on create, now we'll see that we have this person class in here. Now, if you, one thing also to notice in here, we have um, the, the references to the system namespace as we had done in the program file, the program.cs file. But we also now have a defined namespace. So this is a custom namespace that we're defining so that way we can separate any potential conflicts between classes, other classes that may be named person. So this person class belongs to the C-sharp crash namespace. So we can easily either type C-sharp crash dot person to reference this or there's an even sleeker way of doing it. And I'll show you this in a second to reference this class. So in, in this class is defined as public, making this available globally in our application. If we want to hide this class, we can simply specify private, but that wouldn't make sense in this case, so let's just leave that as public. So we're saying public class person. And in here, in this class, we see a constructor. This is actually called a constructor. And what this constructor is, is this constructor is basically um, if the initializer of a person object. So in this constructor, you can do things like assign a values to a property or to a field that's located within this class, or you can set initial values. You can instantiate other objects. There's many different things you can do with a constructor. Um, if you want something to automatically um, initialize whenever this person object initializes, then you should definitely put this in a constructor or at least consider it. Um, what I want to do <clears throat> in this person object is I want to define the state and behavior of this object. So let's get started with that. Um, the very first thing I'm going to do here, and I'm probably going to copy some code I wrote on the side here just to kind of save some time, but we'll try to type out as much of this as we can. Uh, so the very first thing here is I'm going to define some fields. So for now, let me just get rid of this constructor so that way it's not taking up any space. Yeah, what's going on here? Okay, here we go. So the very first thing I'll define here is a private field. So private string name. And basically what this is, is this is going to be just a field that's accessible to this class. It cannot be accessed outside of this person class. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. The second one will be private int age. So we're defining an age field. So these are called fields, okay? Now you do have a concept called properties, which I'm gonna show you in a second, because there's many ways to define the state here. Let me just add a comment. And by the way, guys, to add comments, uh, I should have uh, explained that earlier. You can use a double forward slash to define a comment, 
What a comment does is allows you to document your code so that way um, other developers and yourself would understand and know what's happening in a certain section of your code block. Um, generally, comments are not viewable within the browser, um, but you know you definitely might want to add some comments to just you know for some clarity, just to make things a lot clearer to other developers. So we define these two fields. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to let's let's go ahead and redefine our constructors, but we're going to make them a little bit different. So let's say constructors. And the first constructor here will be public person. This is how you write a constructor. And um, in this, what we want to do is whenever we initialize this constructor, we want to pass it a name. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to pass it a name and an age. So we're going to say string name and, and int age. And doing that will allow us to initialize these fields above. So to initialize these fields with the values that we're passing into this constructor method, what we can do is simply say this dot age is equal to age. And just above that, let me also say this, just to keep things in order, this dot name is equal to name. And now by doing that, what we're doing again is when we say new person in somewhere else in our application, we're going to pass the name of that person and the age of that person to this constructor. And then this constructor will take those values and assign them to these fields up above. So that's generally how it works uh, with constructors. This is a common convention that you'll see in most programming languages. Now, one thing I want to specify that's unique to C-sharp is the concept of properties. And a property allows you to set mutators and to set um, accessors within the class so that way they're not 100% uh, uh, you know, fully public in some cases. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave things as public just so it's nice and simple, but you can also set private uh, properties if you want to you know, make certain things um, hidden toward other classes, like you don't want to expose certain data points and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste in this code below and I'll kind of walk you through what's happening here. So below this constructor, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to paste this code and you guys can type out this code as I'm explaining it. And what I did here is I added these two properties of the same name, name and age. Notice that they are capitalized versus the fields which are lowercased. And basically what's happening here is when I pass in these values through the constructor and I set these values to the fields above, these properties will then take this value. If I add a value directly to this property, it will set the field value to be in, to be in, um, in uh, equality with the field above. So for example, if I say person.name, the capital N, is equal to Ron, then it will automatically assign that value that's assigned to the field above, which is the same on um, Ron. That's what this set function does here. Now the get function is the accessor and it will return the, the field name back to the caller. So if I say uh, person.age or person.name is gonna give me the age and name respectively of the person object. Um, now in some cases, this is not fully necessary to do it this way. I'm gonna show you guys another way to do this. But keep in mind, if you do it this way that I'm going to show you, then you generally would not need to have the constructor call here. So let me just also show you this. So generally, what you can also do here is I'm just going to add a comment here. Make sure I'm out of that. Say alternative way to set properties. So what you can do is you can actually set them directly like this implicitly. So public string name get set just like that and you can do the same thing for age and I'm going to explain the difference in a second so you guys understand exactly what I mean okay, I'm having some issues here one second okay cool all right so age get set now what are, what's the difference between the two well the difference is in this case if I, I don't need the constructor. See, the reason why I'm doing this above is because 
if you notice, we have this lowercase name and this lowercase age. These are basically the fields that are above here. So basically kind of the, the flow here is when I call new person um, and then I pass in a name and an age to the constructor above here, then we're setting these field values in the constructor and then automatically the values get set to the, these properties as well, okay? Um, whereas in the other case, if I just uh, specify it like this, then I won't really need to define the constructor and instead I would directly assign the values like this um, externally outside of this class. You would do something like person.name is equal to, you know, uh, Billy. And this is going to error out because I'm not in the right context, but that's fine. I'm just demonstrating. So generally, that's what you would do. Instead of passing it to the constructor, you would assign it directly if you're using this method. Now, it depends on what your preference is. I'm going to stick with the other way just because I wanted to show you how constructors work. And to be honest with you, I feel that it's a better architectural design. That's just my opinion, um, using the constructor plus the property. Uh, but, you know, you could do it the way you feel is the, the best way to do it. Uh, so let me just clean this up. And what I'm going to do here, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment this out. So that way that's out the way. So that way you'll have that in the future. Okay. All right. So let's move on here. So now we've defined our properties and we've defined our fields. Uh, the next thing I want to do is, so we've already defined our state. Let's define another method that uh, represents behavior. So I want to greet. I want to be able to greet the user when they um, when we call person.greet. So I'm going to create a new um, method called greet. So let's make sure we're doing this within the context of the class before this um, ending curly brace. And we're going to say public. And remember, we have to say public because we want this to be accessible outside of this class. So we say public void and greet. And one thing I want to highlight before I jump in here, notice I'm not using the static keyword here. I'm just saying public void greet. And the reason why we're not using the static keyword is because the intent of this class is that this uh, class should be instantiated or we should create a new object that is a representation of this class. That's the reason why we don't necessarily need the static because we may want to use this class over and over again, but in different areas and at different times of our application flow. So we don't necessarily want to keep it in memory that amount of, you know, a very long time. We might want to destroy it, which happens automatically through garbage collection efforts, but that's a whole nother topic. So let's uh, define this public uh, voided method. This won't return anything, so that's why it's void. And instead, what we're going to do, or what we're simply just going to do, is console.write line. And we're going to greet our user. So we're going to create a formatted string. Let's close, off it, close it off with a semicolon. And let's say, hello, my name is... And we have two options here. We can use the lowercase one, or we can use the property, which will be my preference, because then we'll be guaranteed that everything is in sync here. So uh, we're going to say my name is name with the capital N, and then I am age with the capital A years old. And now we're going to save that. So now that pretty much defines our class. So now we can use this class anywhere. So now let's go back to our program.cs file here. And basically what we want to do is we want to call this method within this, um, where we're, wherever we're calling say hello right underneath that, actually right here in the methods uh, method, we're going to create a new object. So let's do that. We're going to say person. Uh, let's just say p uh, person. Actually, you know what? Let's make it simpler so that you know what we're talking about here. Let's say person P is equal to new person. And if you recall, we have a constructor that expects a name and an age. So I'm going to give it a name. Let's, let's say Jerry. And the age will be 45. Okay. Now, if you notice, we're getting an error message because it's, uh, person is not being recognized here. And the reason why it's not being recognized is because Currently, .NET doesn't know where to find the person class. So what we actually have to do is similarly to what we do with the uh, using system, we actually have to bring in this namespace. 
up top. So let's import that by using using C sharp crash semicolon. So now if I scroll back down here all the way to the bottom, where is it? Do, 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 do. Now you notice that it's gone. Now you notice that everything looks fine. Okay, so now the person is being recognized and that's because we defined a namespace in our person class of C sharp uh, crash. So now if I want to call the greet method, I just simply say P, that's the variable, dot greet. Okay, so as you can see, we're having an error message here. And I'm not really sure why. Let's run this and see what's going on here. Okay, so we're having an error message here about a namespace cannot, okay. Okay, so, hmm, do I feel? Okay, that's a little tricky here, guys. So let me try to figure out what's going on here. So there's obviously an issue with the namespace. Um, let's see, let's go back to our person class here and see what's going on. A little bit of debugging. So we have a namespace C sharp crash. Let me just copy this um, as such. I just wanna make sure I have that correct. And let me go back here to program up to the very top. That, sh that should work. I'm not sure why that won't work. Let's see, let's run again. Okay, so <clears throat> not really sure what's going on. It's, the problem's line 35, line 35 of the person class. So let's go back to a person class and see line 35, and this is part of the debugging section of this uh, course. All right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, where I bet you there's a problem somewhere with um, with the uh, let's see with all right. So let's now this is usually a problem whenever you're dealing with curly braces, and I think it's because it's outside of this class. It's outside of the namespace. All right, guys, I actually found out what the problem is here. So the problem was that my public method was defined outside of the namespace. So if you're having the same issue, what you want to do is go back to your person.cs file, and you want to make sure that this greet method is uh, contained within the class itself. Make sure it's defined within the class. Sometimes the curly braces can be a bit confusing. So just make sure it's defined, and once it's defined, once it's specified within the class, then any error messages or squiggly lines should go away. And if I, if I run this now again, just to kind of show you what's happening, you see that I'm now getting a greeting of, hello, my name is Jerry, and then the age of Jerry, okay, which is 45. And basically how that's working is, going back to the program class at where we were before, I'm passing in Jerry as a string literal value and I'm passing in the age of Jerry and that's how it works. So let me scroll down here to show you guys again. See, as you see here on this line, line 308, this is what's happening. I'm passing in Jerry as the value and the number 45 to represent Jerry's age and then I'm just simply calling p.greet. Um, and doing it this way, you know, see, if I didn't specify the constructor, then I normally would have to do this if I had the other um, uh, properties available. I would normally have to do p.name with a capital and then have to say Jerry like this, right? And then, you know, and so on. That's another way of doing it. But if you don't feel like doing that, you could just simply specify it through the constructor, set up some fields, and then have some underlying properties that you can access the data through. So that's generally how classes work and how the uh, methods and classes come together.